This is the new TC Pride Podcast, episode 97, on location at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church with the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus. On location at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church with Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus, and I am here with... Jane Ramsire miller Jane, great to see you. You are our guest director. I am the guest artistic director for Rise Up. And how did this whole collaboration uh, get started? Uh, I got a call back in October because the Men's Chorus was looking for someone to cover this March concert. And um, I have been an activist and an artist all my life, and it just felt like a really good fit uh, in terms of the concert topic. Yes, so when the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus asked me to conduct this concert, one of the signature pieces is a piece called The Seven Last Words of the Unarmed. Uh, And it's the last words of unarmed black men who were killed. And um, very, very poignant, incredible piece. And I felt um, as a woman and as a white woman that it didn't make sense for me to conduct this piece. And so we are bringing in uh, a good friend of mine, conductor from Cincinnati named Steve Malloy, uh, African-American gay man. And uh, he is going to conduct this particular piece uh, and come out and see it. It's amazing and really powerful. Yeah, and of course, your home chorus is the One Voice Mixed Chorus. Uh, We've actually covered them on the podcast before. What have they been up to lately? So One Voice Mixed Chorus is Minnesota's gay, lesbian, bi, transgender, and allied chorus. Um, And uh, One Voice is celebrating the 30th anniversary this year. So working right now on a concert called Roots and Wings, which will be in June. Uh, And before that, April 13 and 14, a Transgender Voices Festival, which will be held at McAllister College. An amazing event. I hope people from the community attend. Well, one of my favorite things about the One Voice Mixed Chorus is that you don't actually have to be able to read music to be in the chorus, which, uh, which we talked about when we covered the chorus. Um, and actually, there are a lot of ways people can get involved, uh, either in the chorus or uh, supporting the chorus in other ways. Sure. One of the best ways to support both choruses is to come to concerts and bring your friends, especially people that haven't attended uh, a concert before. It's great to bring them in and introduce them to the community. There are also ways people can volunteer backstage. Um, Of course, financial donations are really important and really helpful. Yeah. Well, thank you. How can people find out more about uh, One Voice Mixed Course? Uh, You can go to the One Voice website at uh, onevoicemn, like Minnesota, dot org. Thanks so much. Great to see you, Jane, and I'm sure we'll see you again. Thank you. Glenn. Uh, So it's 2018, I've been with the chorus for about three years now, starting January 2015. This is a really good experience, just kind of connecting with this kind of brotherhood, and we're doing a really important concert right now for Rise Up, for social justice, for um, LGBTQ people and people of color. Um, So if you're listening, you definitely need to come check us out. It's going to sound great. Larry Goodermont. Larry, uh, how long have you been involved with the chorus, and how did you get involved? Um, Well, I sang with the Los Angeles Gay Men's Chorus for about 13 years. I moved back here in 2016 to take care of my dad, who's struggling with Alzheimer's. Um, And so, fate would have it, I got uh, accepted here in September 2016. And what's your favorite part about being in the chorus? (laughs) What we're doing right now. The terrific sense of community and brotherhood and broader look at communities that relate to us. We have to reach out across what we think are barriers. We're, we're all in this together. We are not fragmented communities. We do this together as one. We are much more powerful. And this show in particular, so important, so timely. TC Pride Podcast on location at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church uh, with the Twin Cities Game Men's Chorus. And I'm here with... Jeff Heine, Executive Director. Hey, Jeff, great to see you again. Uh, so, you know, it's been a while since the TC Pride Podcast covered the chorus, which we just talked about when we ran into each other recently. It's been around 90 episodes, actually. Um, and, you know, we're about to hit 100 episodes, so I thought it was time to check back in uh, with the guys at the chorus uh, to see what you all have been up to. And it sounds like I picked a great time uh, to check back in. Uh, tell me about the current production that the chorus is doing right now. Yeah, well, first of all, 100 episodes? Congratulations. That, that's excellent. Yeah, it's been a long time. It has been a long time. Um, yeah, right now we're in, uh, we're working on the second concert of our 37th season and the concert is called Rise Up. And, you know, the best way to describe it is this is our social justice concert. Um, we were singing songs um, that uh, talk about the history of uh, all of the civil rights movements and how those songs apply to today and what music can we also offer that gives hope for for the future as well so it's um we're singing for not just uh, our lgbt uh, community 
but for uh, what we consider to be any community that's marginalized uh, by society today. And so there's so many interesting elements uh, of this production. Uh, one, of course, is, is that thematic content uh, that, that you just touched on. Um, you know, I know Jane talks about on the website about, about how 2017 was a year full of sanctioned discrimination, fear, and hatred. How important is it that there are productions like this and others offering an alternative to all of the negative messaging out there right now? Well, one thing that um, we do, I think, is the fact that, that we sing. You know, um, I, I remember uh, back five, six years ago now almost with uh, the marriage amendment fight, um, we, there would be a lot of uh, rallies and speeches that would go on during that time. And we would get invited to participate. And uh, one of the one of those rally planners said to me, you know, you can convey in a three minute song deep emotions and feelings that people can't necessarily put into words, but that, but it resonates with them. It's relevant to them in a way that a 10, 15 minute speech just can't do. You know, a speech can get people riled up and interested and excited and motivated, but we can really get to um, the heart of the matter, so to speak. So that's why um, we do concerts like this. You know, we just felt it was time where, you know what, we really need to take a look at what's going on um, this is not just a concert that focuses on one movement. Um, we all share one thing in common, and that's just a desire to be loved, to be respected, to be treated um, as equals in one community. And another interesting part of this production is a collaboration with the Twin Cities Women's Chorus. Um, how did that whole thing come about? It was really Jane's idea. I mean, I knew we had always known that um, there would be an opportunity for collaboration with other artistic organizations here in town. And, you know, Jane and I were talking one day and, you know, the idea of just the Twin City Women's Choir came up, especially when we were looking at songs or she was looking at songs that uh, reflect um, and speak to the themes and the issues raised during the Women's March on Washington um, a year ago in January. And uh, for us to invite uh, the women's choir to join us on stage and sing with us, and ha they have an opportunity to perform as well. Again, it's just let's just bring let's just bring uh, these people together with us and uh, see what kind of magic we can make. You also released a song list for the performance on the website. Would you like to talk about any of the individual works in the piece? Yeah, there's there are several um, that uh, I remember when when this concert was first being thought about well over a year ago um one song i know that i was always always loved and that uh, one voice mixed chorus had done recently was um glory from the movie selma um, won the academy award for best song a couple of years ago and it's just such a powerful uplifting song that with a lot of the music we sing that makes us to really reflect and takes us to some dark places you know glory is kind of a response to all of that you know at, at the end you know, we uh, we can rise up. Um, probably the most uh, controversial piece, I think, you know, for lack of a better word, is a piece called Seven Last Words of the Unarmed. Um, this was commissioned and first performed by the University of Minnesota Men's Glee Club. And the work is now starting to make the rounds within, uh, especially the gay men's choruses in the country. Um, seven Last Words of the Unarmed um, is seven movements um, each movement are the final words spoken by a black man uh, after he was uh, killed by people in authority. And uh, we've had a lot of struggles with this song, you know, for many reasons. And, uh, and we were expecting it, um, but it's a very powerful work. Um, you know, I know some of us in the chorus ask, well, you know, our chorus is predominantly white. You know, who are we? to sing this work. And my response is, who are we not to sing this work? This is why we're here. Um, and if we can take our audience on a journey, uh, a painful journey, a challenging journey, but bring them back home again, I think it's going to be worth it. And of course, there's no quicker way to make a production extra classy than by adding a string quartet. Um, and y'all did just that. Uh, can you tell me a little about the string quartet you're collaborating with for this uh, production? Yeah, Lux String Quartet. They're, they're a local quartet. Um, the members in the quartet uh, do work with other organizations as well. Um, I had heard them before. And, you know, when Jane mentioned she wanted to bring them in for a quartet, 
um, I got really excited about it. And, you know, I heard them for the first time at our all day rehearsal a couple of weeks ago. Jane brought them in so the guys had a chance to sing with them. We actually had the women's choir and us and the Lux String Quartet all together in the art room here at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist, uh, just working on some of the songs together. And it just brings a nice a nice sound to everything that we're doing. Um, after the seven last words piece, we will just have a moment of reflection where the quartet will play and just give our audiences a chance to process what they've just heard and uh, think about it for a moment. And uh, it's just, you know, yeah, it is. It's just a classy sound, a uh, very powerful sound. And I think it will be very uh, a very needed sound uh, when we do hear them play on their own. And beyond Rise Up, Twin Cities Game Men's Chorus actually has a lot of great productions coming up this year. Yeah, we are. We're ending our season uh, with Queen, um, another favorite of mine. Um, I've, you know, a pet dream of mine has always been to do the music of Freddie Mercury and Queen. And there are some great arrangements out there for Men's Chorus. And um, now that Jane will be finishing up with us uh, as guest artistic director for Rise Up, Jerry Rabino who's well known in the arts community and we're very fortunate to have him as our our out loud ensemble director. Um, he and I had lunch and I, I talked him into being our guest artistic director because I just pictured Jerry being able to to shape that show into something great and a lot of fun and energetic and challenge our guys in the process of it and uh, really wind up the season on a real high note. Yeah, the, the music of Queen isn't, isn't a hard sell, is it? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, we pretty much just tell people we're doing Queen for our Pride concert and people just get that look in their eyes and, you know, where can I get tickets? And I said, well, just go to the website. So. And of course, the Twin Cities Game Men's Chorus, we were just talking in rehearsal about uh, they've got some big plans for the parade and the festival this year. Yeah, we've actually uh, working um, on a real serious uh, um, entry for the parade. Um, you know, we we do march in the parade every year and participate, you know, because we we want to be a part of the community in that regard. And it's a lot of fun. It's a great way for us to wrap up the entire season with the parade. And uh, we've got a committee that's got some really interesting ideas. So they're looking at, you know, how can we uh, take that Queen concert and uh, put it on the streets of Hennepin Avenue? <laughs> Now, we talked before on the podcast about how, you know, there are a ton of ways to support TCGMC. Um, you can sponsor a rehearsal. You can volunteer. You can support TCGMC while you shop, which that's always fun. Um, what are maybe one or two ways that people can support the chorus and uh, other important productions like Rise Up? What uh, the main way they can support us is by coming out to see the show and not just come out themselves, but bring someone who's never seen us before who you really think would enjoy seeing our concert. Um, for for so many people in our audiences, um, attending a Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus was part of their own identity, part of their own search for self-identity and self-awareness, whether they were gay or straight or however they chose to identify. Um, for them, just being in this safe, welcoming space of Ted Mann Concert Hall with all of us and our very safe and welcoming audience members is just a great experience. And that's a great way to support us is by bring someone with you who's uh, never been there before. And we've talked about how, even if you don't necessarily have any musical ability, there are actually a lot of like administrative ways that, that you can help the chorus out too. Oh yeah, like I have a feeling we'll be needing some help with the pride float. So there's things like that, but we do. We have, uh, we always have need for help in the office, you know, like for uh, mailings and um, decorations. I mean, whatever it happens to be, you know, we also do like, fundraisers throughout the year where we're also always looking for volunteers to help with that as well. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of opportunities. So if you don't sing, but you want to be a part of the, the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus community, there are ways to do it. Yeah, you guys are out there all the time at different events uh, as the Twin Cities Pride podcast has been covering events in the community. Like we're always seeing you guys there. So, uh, so yeah. And lastly, how about just some general information about the performance and, and how folks can uh, come and enjoy it? Yeah, we'll rise up. Um, we'll be at Ted Mann Concert Hall on March 23rd and 24th. You can visit our website at tcgmc.org. That's Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus. And uh, from there, there are links to purchase tickets, which will take you to the U of M Ticket and Events Office website. Um, the U of M does all the ticketing for us, so that's where you can get tickets. Um, and uh, we have uh, tickets of all price ranges available. Uh, we're also starting something new. Uh, we're doing an advanced student rush 
tickets are $10 for up to four tickets with a valid student ID. Instead of showing up one hour before showtime, you can actually go over to the U of M box office at Northrop and bring your ID and get up to four or $10 tickets right now. You don't need to wait till the night of. It's just uh, we want to make sure that especially uh, students um, in our community are aware of this show and just make it uh, easy for them to get to without wondering if there would be tickets available or not. And like we said, Rise Up has been a truly collaborative production. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the various organizations and all the individuals that have that have helped out in putting this thing together? Well, we couldn't have done it without them. I mean, it's uh, from having, uh, first of all, having Jane Ramshire Miller, the uh, artistic director of One Voice Mixed Chorus, agreeing to come in and being our guest artistic director for this show. Um, I couldn't think of anyone better for it to do this type of a show with us. Um, yeah, Twin Cities Women Choir, uh, Women's Choir, uh, the Lux String Quartet. Um, we have guest percussionists coming in, guest musicians coming in. Um, I still don't even know all of them yet who are coming in, but, uh, but we've got a big lineup of people coming in to do the show with us, and uh, it's going to be quite, uh, I think, a remarkable concert. Well, hey, thanks so much for your time. As always, great to talk to you again, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you. The TC Pride Podcast is a production of Podletter Media and Twin Cities Pride. Subscribe now on iTunes, on Android, or by email at tcpridepodcast.org. Get above the noise by raising your voice. Podletter Media turns your email newsletter, blog, or video content into a more powerful, more personal, more intimate, on-demand listening experience. Your podcast. Your story. Your voice. Simplified. Amplified. Learn more now at podletter.com.